Please share a small introduction of Tradecom International. Yeah. So my name is uh, Inder Arora. <coughs> I am the Managing Director of uh, Tradecom International Private Limited. And we have another company, uh, Unisource Papers Private Limited. So to give you a brief, uh, Tradecom was started in 1988. It's been over uh, over, over three decades now so we deal in uh, recovered papers we deal in, uh, uh, in, in wood pulp and uh, our customer base is uh, small and medium uh, mills in terms of uh, recovered paper imported recovered paper and uh, uh, in terms of wood pulp uh, our customer base is uh, all large uh, integrated pulp and paper mills and on the Uniso side of the business uh, we have different uh, couple of verticals we are uh, we are uh, uh, wholesale dealers for itc uh, we uh, we are running converting centers for itc and we also import uh, liner board uh, and high quality flutings uh, and customize uh, at uh, two locations one in uh, pune and one in uh, sonipat and supply to uh, all the converters uh, across pan india uh, on a pan india basis being a reputed importer of covered paper, how do you analyze the waste paper market? So I can only say uh, uh, if uh, there has to be uh, uh, growth in India uh, uh, of the paper industry, the raw material, major raw material will continue to be uh, 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 recovered paper, whether it is imported, whether it is uh, domestic, uh, uh, domestic collections and infrastructure uh, will eventually improve. So we will be able to uh, uh, utilize more and more of our uh, waste what we are generating within the country uh, and import uh, in terms of uh, uh, countries like America who have surplus uh, waste paper uh, or UK who have a surplus waste paper uh, that they will uh, continue to ship to uh, uh, India because India being now the largest market uh, even though China which has banned uh, recovered paper they continue to buy large volumes via their operations in uh, Southeast Asia in terms of recycled pulp and all. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I must mention here, yesterday there has been a big announcement by ITC. Uh, they are putting up a 4,000 crore uh, uh, investment in Uttarakhand uh, uh, coming up with the integrated pulp and paper mill. So this is uh, one of the major uh, expansions what we have seen recently in terms of integrated, integrated pulp and paper mills. But having said that, uh, major Majority of the uh, uh, requirement of India would be fed with the imported and domestic waste paper. India consumes a large quantity of imported waste paper. There are new large capacities coming up in Europe and America and they will also consume waste paper. Will it be difficult for Indian paper mills to get the raw material at a lower price? How do you see that this situation? Let me let me put it put as this: uh, globally, pulp and paper production is over 400 million tons. And whenever and and there is a, there is a uh, I would say on an average there is a five seven percent uh, uh, percent growth in terms of production in terms of consumption and also that finally will relate in terms of generation of waste paper. And yes, uh, like I said, China is indirectly importing by setting up mills across the world to make a recycled pulp and send it to their uh, send it to their plants in in their home country. Uh, uh, and China has been a major player not now China has been major player from day one in fact when they stopped the uh, uh, import of waste paper they were 50 percent net importer of waste paper from all over the world and now slowly gradually by setting up these mills they will scale up back to their 50 percent uh, uh, recycled pulp this thing but then rest of the 50 percent uh, 
uh, is available for the other uh, other countries and india also being a major uh, you know indian paper, pulp and paper industry is growing very well packaging sector is growing very well so i think there should not be any challenge we should keep getting uh, volumes what we want and our collection domestic collection is very low at the moment in terms of uh, what you see in germany what you see in japan which is touching about almost 70 80% so there is a room to uh, collect and recycle waste paper within the country also so i don't think there should not be there should be any major concern and and then mills who are making paper from integrated uh, uh, from from their virgin pulp or they are importing market pulp so that waste also eventually gets into the stream and is available for the mills for recycling so i don't see much challenge uh, uh, as the industry grow as the capacity expands collections will improve availability of waste paper will be always there around as you know there has been a severe fluctuation in the waste paper prices how a paper mill can ensure the sustainability in its supply for the imported recovered paper fiber with lower price prices is something which is uh, uh, 100% based on uh, market demand and supply you know uh, uh, we have seen uh, the, uh, lately the volatility is on two accounts let's say when we talk about uh, waste paper prices in us we have seen a lot of uh, mills uh, uh, large mills like groups like uh, cascades uh, uh, domtar converting their machines into uh, 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 brown paper uh, you know in a sense uh, test liners and uh, fluting so so there is lot of uh, uh, demand from those mills these are large mills which have been converted and also from the point of view of sustainability uh, people tend are, are tending to use more of a recycled paper than compared to virgin paper so obviously there has been good demand within the country uh, 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 which has uh, which has driven this prices to on the higher side but if somebody wants to import at this price waste paper is available and when uh, anybody imports at a higher price obviously when the furnished cost is higher so they will have to mark up sufficiently to increase the paper prices which have been depressed in terms of craft paper so uh, so uh, so this volatility is going to be around uh, depending uh, waste uh, how how uh, the uh, uh, country where the waste is being generated uh, how are they consuming it uh, consuming it on the other side we have seen a pretty soft market in terms of waste paper from europe and middle east uh, because the, uh, uh, the, the, the whole uh, uh, you know uh, uh, whatever the waste is generated uh, even though after we is being consumed by the local mills is still available for export in terms of pricing in terms of incentives uh, uk government incentivizes all the packaging grades of paper which is exported so 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 somewhere there is uh, high prices somewhere there is low prices on an average uh, 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 it works out and mills continue to import uh, but yes sure uh, you have to deal with all this volatility we had uh, uh, two years of lockdown during covid uh, uh, you know the shipping was very tight in fact another thing i must mention uh, cost of any waste paper being imported into the country uh, is is uh, i would say uh, uh, i would say 60 60 70% fiber and 30% shipping cost so shipping has been a very uh, uh, down uh, after the covid you know so that's compensating this so something of the compensate uh, compensates uh, to the net cif prices uh, uh, during covid shipping was 60 70% and fiber fiber cost was just about 30% so we will continue to uh, see all these things uh, the good mills well managed mills financially strong mills they know how to take care of this in fact other than this there is a currency exchange also which always plays a major factor when you, when you are importing anything uh, india is doing pretty well in terms of economy growth so our currency more or less at the moment has been stable for some for a while in fact uh, i was reading an article uh, indian bonds are now being uh, sold by morgan stanley uh, internationally as an investment so uh, and probably that is going to happen 
coming uh, uh, coming year in June or so. And when these bonds are open for investments uh, for all the investors around the world, we expect a lot of inflow of uh, foreign exchange uh, into the country. So when uh, our foreign reserves get stronger, so our currency will also exchange will also be in our favor. Rupee will be stronger. So all these factors will be around, and we have to play with all this and see how best we can run our businesses. There are new capacities in pulp generation coming up in overseas market. We might see the dumping of pulp into the Indian market at lower price. Do you think that it will hamper the profitability of Indian paper mills? Well, um, uh, uh, from my uh, from my perspective, uh, we have seen uh, during lockdown. The worst affected sector was writing and printing sector because schools were shut and education almost turned online and it continues to be like that. And we have had uh, digital uh, uh, digitalization, uh, new millenniums uh, and younger generation, uh, they mostly read their newspapers online. So the uh, overall demand for writing and printing was very, very low. So prices uh, were down and also uh, uh, also uh, pulp prices or probably the wood prices or the non-agro fiber prices uh, were also reasonably stable. Now, lately, after the COVID, we have seen again volatility in prices of writing and printing paper. First of all, I think in India, I would say what has driven all these prices is one is uh, uh, government NCRT, I guess, has come up with a new syllabus. So all the books are being reprinted, uh, whereas there is a, f a huge demand for the paper. And uh, and uh, we've seen uh, uh, going up and down, like initially we saw a lot of export of uh, writing and printing paper, but now we see because of this huge demand, there is a lot of import of writing and print print printing paper, especially from ASEAN countries like Indonesia, China, and the whole industry is uh, talking about it that how it can be uh, how it can be controlled uh, so within the country the demand which is driven is primarily because of uh, uh, because, because of uh, education sector demand from the education sector and also uh, i think in india uh, we continue to uh, uh, in our schools uh, uh, in our colleges uh, we continue to see that people uh, uh, tend to write uh, than use their computers uh, whereas in Internationally, we see that even at a very young age, uh, people st uh, people stop writing and they are doing everything on their computers. So, so th these are the factors, and as well, I think f f for the reason uh, one. Uh, 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 but mills are mills are having a challenge. I understand wood prices are going up uh, because of this uh, uh, b because of the demand from the paper industry, demand from the other industries who are consuming wood. Uh, you know, so I would. I would say that this run of uh, uh, prices, high prices for writing and printing segment should be there for, for some time. There are new capacities in pulp generation coming up in overseas market. We might see the dumping of pulp into the Indian market at lower price. Do you think that it will hamper the profitability of Indian paper mills? Let me tell you, I don't, I don't hear much uh, ma major paper exp expansion in the pulp, uh, pulp segment across. You know, in fact, uh, uh, a lot of uh, let's say major producers in Asia are APP and April Fine. You know, they're putting machines after machines. They're expanding in tissue segment also uh, very aggressively, and they're trying to consume all their pulp. With uh, so, only thing is uh, the availability of pulp by these mills to the market is not there as much so that uh, uh, but then i don't see uh, major expansions there so india will have to uh, uh, when they have to import a market pulp most of the mills which have their own integrated uh, operations so they are able to they are also facing challenges of wood prices uh, uh, but then uh, uh, this volatility in pulp has been also there lately you know 
we see we saw on one time we saw 112 prices going sub 500 and now we are talking about 600 plus so so like i'm saying that we are in an age wherein we are affected even now today when we talk about china china is pretty slow uh, uh, you know we don't even see uh, uh, as much chinese traveling overseas uh, uh, you know uh, their economy also is pretty close in terms of uh, uh, various uh, uh, various growth uh, uh, elements uh, so once they wake up so probably there is there are guzzlers like there will be huge demand from china uh, once china stops buying paper uh, pulp be it pulp be it any other commodity the prices go down so i feel this challenges of volatility in prices be it waste paper pulp and paper prices is going to be going to be there and we have to get used to it imported pulp is uh, one of the raw material of paper mills what appreciation do you project in the demand of imported pulp in next 5 years also do you think that table bear manufacturers could be the new consumers of imported pulp in future I can't comment much because this is not an area of my expertise but I can tell you one thing uh, uh, you know the major consumers of market pulp are the mills who do not have enough of pulp capacity uh, versus their machine capacity but most of the large paper mills they are they are they are majorly covered by their own uh, uh, pulp operations and on the other side uh, there are non wood paper mills they would they need certain percentage of uh, uh, long fiber to add to their furnish uh, so they have been uh, they, they are, there has not been any major expansion we we do hear about sethi adding up a machine uh, and so on so forth but that hasn't changed uh, the dynamics of demand in india for pulp as much the only area where there is a huge demand of uh, uh, pulp uh, which we have seen growth over a period is uh, bctmp pulps uh, there are large uh, lot of mills uh, uh, are coming up like i said itc is, uh, is expanding at their badrachalam uh, location they have now they have announced a new plant in uttarakhand uh, then uh, we have seen uh, 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 expansions at uh, or new uh, expansions at jk we have also seen uh, new uh, tnpls and imamis in last few years coming up with the board board machines so this is the, there has been a de more demand of all the pulps into bctmp you know and bctmp softwood has to be imported you know they, now these mills in india they are setting up their own lines pulp lines to make their own bctmp hardwood but then softwood has to come from north america or it has to come from scandinavia so uh, uh, but then demand in europe demand in china demand within america north america has not grown as much so this pulps are enough pulp is available to all these mills but again prices go up prices go down depending china is in the market china is not in the market so as claimed by some paper mill association that excess import of paper is hampering the small and medium sized paper mills viability how would you define this situation see i don't want to comment anything uh, which will lead to any controversial uh, discussion but i as an individual uh, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a as a businessman who has been in pulp and paper industry all uh, all these years i think uh, uh, the open economy is always better than a protected economy you know it gives uh, it gives a chance to improve your operations innovate your operations uh and that eventually leads to your uh, uh, long longevity in the business and if you are in a protected environment you know like in a sense you are not exposed to the international situation eventually you will get exposed regardless of how much you protect your economy so uh, i can only comment uh, that i am a, i am a, i'm a, i'm from a school where i would uh, vote for a open economy but i would not get into uh, deeper details into uh, uh, the paper should be there should be anti dumping duty or not uh, I, i don't don't you think that there has to be a level playing field for importer and paper mills import of paper should be at benchmark price in order to prevailing healthy market competition your comment please uh, 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 
so this is again a, a very very uh, 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 anybody can have a different perspective so today we are signing up n numbers of FTAs from different uh, diff with different countries around the world to increase uh, the trade between us and then we as an ASEAN region we want uh, this region to develop uh, to be known as uh, Europe of Asia or um, North America of, uh, of Asia uh, like they have grown over the years so obviously we would want to trade more within the uh, Southeast Asia so that's why we have a zero zero import duty policy you know so uh, on the one side uh, there are a lot of benefits if you look at uh, a larger picture if you go sector wise industry wise obviously uh, when more imports come uh, 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 you know the prices are uh, pressurized uh, uh, local mills uh, suffer so this is something which has to look be looked at at a very larger uh, with a larger picture you know I am an individual I am running my business uh, I want my business to be profitable and sustainable but at the same time I have to also see that I am an Indian citizen or I am a global citizen you know how how do I run my business having everything uh, uh, factored in you know I can't ignore one thing just for my sake that I want to I want to only benefit of it so again I said again it's an individual perspective so I feel if we if we look upon everything as a global citizen and then per se as an Indian citizen uh, and run our businesses uh, uh, that will be more sustainable otherwise like there will be some protection by uh, some uh, by some government other government may look at it differently so obviously then you you lose an opportunity to face a challenge any challenge coming in life leads to eventual growth of an uh, individual or an organization you know so if we start avoiding challenges in our life we would not be able to grow also we would not be able to participate in those innovations and uh, 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 and the best practices what are being adopted all over the world you know today we are seeing mergers of industry uh, uh, across the world like in a sense we recently if I don't know you heard or not uh, Smurfit, Kappa and West Rock are merging so this will create a Vimoth like a giant uh, of uh, fine uh, there's one thing but at the same time uh, if uh, they, this will also give a room uh, for other players to expand you know like today they used to compete and and whatever uh, was the end result for all that competition but now they're gonna work together and they're gonna play with the market but at the same time uh, there are other groups a number of other groups also in uh, around the world so they will have a strategy to put on place so that doesn't mean that uh, uh, you know this this will lead to something bad so I would say that any any changes happen in life or any industry or any uh, any anything like that leads to eventual uh, sharpening your businesses growth and, and, and so on and so forth